Hello, and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at installing a set of Supi's lowering links on this 2013 Honda NC700X. If you're interested in learning more about Supi's links, there will be a link to the Amazon product page in the description below. But anyway, let's get started. So first up, you can see I've got the bike up on its center stand here so that the rear wheel is off the ground. Before we get started, I wanted to quickly check the stock height of the rear wheel. Hopefully you can see here, we've got about three and a quarter, maybe three and five sixteenths from the floor to this ridge on the rear tire. So what I'm trying to achieve today is to lower the bike about an inch, so I'm going to want to bring that rear wheel up to about four and a quarter inches. So as you can see, I've got a jack with a block of wood here to protect the paint underneath the chain side of the swing arm. I'm going to use this to hold up the swing arm once I pull out the suspension links so it doesn't drop on the ground. It will allow, also allow me to kind of adjust the height accurately so that we can slide the links in and out when it's time to put the new ones on. So now we're taking a look at the muffler side of the bike and here is the suspension link on this side. You can see there's a nut here to remove and a nut here. Now it's not real visible in the camera, but this nut here is kind of behind the muffler. So now we're going to finally remove this link. I've got a 14 millimeter socket and we'll take these nuts off now. Now that the nuts are off, I should be able to slide the link out. Now there is a little bit of tension on the suspension still, even though the jack is in there. So I'm going to kind of lift up the rear wheel with my arm to relieve the tension and slide it out. Okay, so here's what the factory link looks like. Now let's go over to the other side and remove that one. So on this side what I'm going to do is put a little tension on the swing arm with the jack. And now I should be able to just slide this out. And as you can see in my case, I'm getting to a certain point and the chain is in the way. So I'm just going to lift that up. Luckily there's enough slack in it right now. And now we can slide this the rest of the way out. Okay, so here's a look at everything side by side. The Supi's links are here, obviously, and the old one is here. So as you most likely already know, the Supi's links are adjustable by loosening these nuts and then spinning the ends in or out, depending on if you want to raise or lower the bike. One other thing to mention about the links is that there is a mark on one end of the long shaft here. And what that indicates is that this nut and mounting bolt have a left hand thread. So if you do open these up to adjust them, keep that in mind. So I've got the new Supi's link and an old factory link kind of put together here. I've got the hole on this side lined up. You can see that the Supi's link from the factory is a little bit longer than the factory link. So I think I do want the bike a little bit lower than what these are set to by default. The instructions also say that it's a good idea to put some Loctite on the threads here before you put these on the bike. So let's crack these loose and do that. So as you can see, I've got one 3 quarter inch wrench on the main body of the link and I've got another on the nut here and we'll just loosen this up. I'm going to hold it down with my foot so it doesn't spin. Okay, so now we'll crack the other nut loose and keep in mind, this is the one with the mark, so this is a left hand or opposite thread. So now that both of these are loose, I can spin these ends to lengthen or shorten the length. Now I want to be careful that however many turns I spin these mounting bolts on this link, I do the same thing on the other one to make sure that I keep them both even so the suspension on the bike stays even and doesn't end up being lopsided in the end. And just before I adjust these threads, I'm going to put a little red Loctite in there as well to help hold everything together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the nut on the left hand thread side and I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite down in the threads here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin this in one turn, well maybe two, just for good measure, and then back it out. And I'm going to leave this one set at the factory height. So now I'll add just a little bit more for the nut and I'll bring this back down and tighten it up and leave it right where it is. And I'll make all my adjustments using this one. Okay, so I've got that one snugged up. There's probably a little too much Loctite there, but that's okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this mounting bolt two turns and measure it and then see what that gives me. Okay. 
So now I'll just snug up the nut just to keep everything positioned. So I'll compare that to the factory link. You can see that it did get longer. I'm going to start with that and see what we get. So now once again, I'll put a little Loctite in the threads on this side. And just to make sure that works in, I'll tighten this one, two turns and then put it back where I had it. A little more Loctite for the nut. I'm not going to tighten this fully until I get it on the bike and everything is positioned where I want it. So now what I'll do is repeat the process on the other link and then check the two to make sure they're the same. So I'm going to grab one of the links and the two bolts and go over to the other side and start reassembling. We're back over on the chain side of the bike and I've got the first link here ready to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just line it up to the bushings and see where we're at. I've got the top mounting bolt lined up to the top bushing, then I've got the bottom one here, and you can see it doesn't line up. So what I'll do now is use my jack and lift up the rear swing arm a little bit, and now I'll check again and see where we're at. Looks like we need to come up a little bit more. That should be good there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to position the link so that the left hand thread side is facing up. That way if I want to adjust these later I can remove just the bottom bolt and let this thing swing down and adjust that bottom turnbuckle. There's more room to work on the bottom than there is on the top. So I'm not sure if it's visible in the camera here but you can see that there is a bushing and there are needle bearings in here so you want to be careful that you don't push the bushing out when you reinstall this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it from the back side I'm going to insert the pivot bolt. Now, of course, I have to move the chain out of the way a little bit. And that slid the bushing back, so I'll push it back into place. And we'll get this positioned. Now I should be able to swing this up and do the same thing on the bottom here. So now we're over on the muffler side of the bike. I'm going to bring this link in. And again, I'm going to position it so that the left-hand thread side of the link is facing the top of the bike. Get that on the top bolt, swing this around. Get it on the bottom one. Make sure those bolts are all seated. So then next up, I'm gonna reinstall the nuts. I'm sure there is a factory torque spec for these nuts, and I recommend that you follow it. However, I'm just gonna tighten them up by feel. So now that those are tight, if you remember, I left these lock nuts loose. And the reason I did that is so that when I put everything together, these links would kind of position themselves where they needed to be and wouldn't add any additional torque or stress on these bolts. Now that the links are fully secured to the bike, I'm going to tighten up the lock nuts to make sure that these don't go anywhere. Now, even though I had previously tightened the top ones, I'm just going to give it a double check here. Can't hurt. Okay, now I'll go over to the other side and tighten that link up. So let's see where we're at with the height. As you can see here, we are now at four and three quarters for the height. So that is a little bit more than I wanted it to be. But I'm going to go ahead and get the bike off the center stand and give it a try. Maybe it'll be okay. So one of the things I was concerned about when I put these lowering links on was how the factory side stand was going to work out. Now in my case, as you can see, it works out just fine. There's no real issue. But I only did drop the bike about an inch and a half. If you plan on dropping your bike much lower than that, you may have some issues with the side stand and you may need to modify it or get an adjustable one. Now having said that, what I found is that the price of the adjustable one isn't much less than a center stand. So for me, what I decided to do before I even got these links was I ended up just going with the center stand because I wanted it for bike maintenance and things like that anyway. But I figured if the side stand wasn't going to work out with the lower height, I would just use the center stand from now on. So even though I ended up dropping the height of the bike a little bit more than I originally wanted to, I think it worked out for the best. So now hopefully the rain will stop and the roads will clear up here. And maybe this afternoon I can go out for a test ride and see how it feels on the road with the suspension lower. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you want to learn more about the Soupies links, there is a link in the description below to the Amazon product page where you can find more. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which is also linked down in the description below. Thanks for watching.